So guys, uh, another Bible study, Bible reading, Titus 1. Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the faith of those chosen of God, for the edification, and the knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness, knowledge of the truth, that's Yeshua, Jesus, the Word of God, and the Law of God. In the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised long ages ago, but at the proper time manifested, even His Word. And who is the Word? In the proclamation with which I was entrusted, according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, my true child, and a common faith, grace and peace of peace from God, the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. Now it's interesting because a lot of people will uh, say that Jesus or Yeshua isn't God. I don't believe he's the Father. And I made a video called He's God at Trinity, if you want to see my understanding on it. I believe he's God, but not the Father, not the same. I don't think he's the same being. I believe they're one in unity, like a husband and wife are one. But this says in verse 3 of Titus 1, According to the commandment of God our Savior. And then in verse 4 says, Grace and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Savior. God our Savior and Christ, Christ, Jesus, Christ Jesus our Savior. And so that right there is calling Yeshua, Jesus, God. And also making a separation between God the Father and Christ Jesus. For this reason I left you in Crete, that you would set in order what remains, and appoint elders in every city as I directed you. Namely, if any man is above reproach, where people can't really say anything bad about you, the husband of one wife, having children who believe, not accused of dissipation or rebellion. And that goes hand in hand, hand, in hand with the uh, above reproach. For the overseer must be above reproach as God's steward. See, overseers and elders are similar. The overseer is more of a, like a head pastor, like watching over the whole congregation, a shepherd. For the overseer must be above reproach as God's steward, not self-willed, not doing what he wants to do, not quick-tempered, not addicted to wine, not pugnacious, not fond of sordid gain, not doing it for his own gain, but for the for the church, for the believers. But hospitable, loving what is good, sensible, just, devout, self control. Holding fast the faithful word, which is in, in accordance with the teaching, so that he will be able to exhort and encourage in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict. For there are many rebellious men, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision. That's either talking about the Jews 
because Jews were considered the circumcision and Gentiles the uncircumcision. Or it's specific, speaking about uh, the circumcision party, which were believing Jews, a group of believing Jews, which believed that you had to keep the commandments and be circumcised in order to come to faith. And it's the other way around. You come to faith. And then you're sanctified throughout your life. One of themselves. Wait, hold on. Especially those of the circumcision. Who must be silenced because they're upsetting whole families. Teaching things that they should not teach for the sake of sordid gain. They're doing it for themselves. For the pro their own profit. One of themselves, a prophet of their own, said Cretans are always liars, e evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, for this reason, reprove them severely, that they may be sound in the faith. Not paying attention to Jewish myths and commandments of men who turn away from the truth. The commandments of men, like the traditions of the elders, the, the Talmud. And even these days, most uh, mainstream Christianity holds to the commandments of men over the commandments of God. Just like the Pharisees did, and they don't even realize it. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but by their deeds they deny Him. See, our works matter. It's about our fruit. Of course we have to believe and have faith, but if we have true faith, it's going to show through our actions. Jesus said you would know the false prophets by their fruit. They profess to know God, but by their deeds they deny Him. Being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deed. See, if we have true faith, it's going to show. And if we're being disobedient all the time, how can we? That's not true faith. It's true faith and a fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, causes you to walk in His ways. Causes you to be obedient. And it's it's crazy to me how hard some people try these days to be to be disobedient to God because they think they don't have to listen. That's rebellion. And the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. But anyway, that's the end of Titus 1. May God bless you guys.